I always thought the British royal family were the masters and mistresses of scandal. Well, tonight, they might have to hand over their crown to the Belgian royal family, who've been ordered to acknowledge a brand new princess. There won't be any official celebrating on the streets of Brussels, though, because, rather embarrassingly, the new royal is the 52-year-old love child of the former king, Albert II. Back in the 1960s, when he was a naughty prince, the supposedly happily married and deeply religious Albert took a long-term lover. Delphine Bowell was the surprise consequence of the illicit affair. For most of her life, she dutifully kept mum about her lineage until a falling out with her father changed her mind. One of Europe's most revered and respected royal families, they have ruled their kingdom since 1830. But behind the pomp and pageantry of the Belgian monarchy, a dirty little secret has festered. The existence of an illegitimate daughter. The love child of former King Albert II. For much of her life, she was all but invisible. Her name is Delphine Bowell, and she refused to remain in the shadows. I became f famous by, by shame. You know, I was the dirty laundry of King Albert. I felt extremely betrayed. Okay, now I want to be treated equally to his other children. That's it. I have a private life and I have no comment. From denial to defiance. Just give your DNA, okay? No big deal. Delphine Bowell battled for her royal birthright. She deserves to go down in history as this extraordinary princess who fought for who she was and her right to exist. And it's wrong to be. Taking on the king and the establishment in a real life Game of Thrones. I had to fight for something that really belongs to me. To become the world's newest princess. Do you still have any love for your father? I don't know. I don't know. Living a charmed life in the Belgian capital, Brussels, Delphine Bowell looks to have it all. She's a hugely successful artist and a contented wife and mother of two. It's hard to believe she was once one of the most divisive figures in the country. What sort of things did you experience? Yeah, I would be told, like, uh, couldn't your mother have taken the pill? Um, you know, or you're a bastard. I've been called a bastard a lot. That I'm a troublemaker that I'm putting Belgium under pressure. That must have been very hard to take. It took me a long, long, long time to say, hold on, I can't be treated like this. Because if I carry on being treated like this, I'm gonna slowly die inside, really. The love match of Prince Albert and Princess Paula has stimulated a great warmth of Belgium affection for the royal house. And it, was it all began with a fairy tale royal wedding in 1959, the Charles and Diana of its day. Belgium's dashing Prince Albert had found love with Italy's glamorous Princess Paula. It is not to be wondered at that Belgium has taken her to its heart. In the 1960s, they were the it couple of European royalty, with three children, Philippe, Astrid and Laurent. But the happy family snaps were all a facade. The prince had found himself a mistress in Belgian aristocrat Baroness Sibylle de Silis Longchamp, better known to Delphine Bowell as her mum. You're the product of an affair between your mum and the king that lasted for 18 years. That's right. I mean, that's longer than, longer than some marriages last. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because they had such an amazing love story. They really, I mean, that was her, the man of her life. They really were good friends as well. You know, they were a very normal, good couple. But the royal affair was anything but normal. And the prince's fourth child would become a source of shame and secrecy. 
Delphine's mother had been stuck in her own unhappy marriage with billionaire steel magnate Jacques Boel. By the time Delphine was born, in 1968, they had long since split. But for the sake of appearances, they kept up the pretense that Jacques was her father. I learned when I was 17 years old um, who my real father was. Um, my mother didn't want to tell me earlier because she was worried that I would say something and that it would cre create a big scandal um, for, for, for my country. Even though he was a prince at that stage, yes. he played a part in your life when you were a little girl, didn't yes. he? Because he was sort of dropping in and out, but you thought he was just your mum's friend. Best friend. Best friend, because they were a lot together. I mean, they were hours and hours on the telephone. We used to go on holiday together, on usually on his boat, so that there wouldn't be anybody to really recognize us. So yes, he was a big part of my life. Even today, loyalty to the crown is the glue that holds together a nation deeply divided between Dutch and French speakers. Back then, it was critical. Living in separate wings of the royal residence, Albert came close to divorcing Paola to be with his mistress. But Sabeel talked him out of it, literally for the sake of king and country. Terrified of bringing the monarchy down, she ended their 18-year affair and walked away. She did not want to be a troublemaker. She was very patriotic. She preferred to sacrifice herself to save the country. In 1993, reconciled with Paola, Prince Albert became king. And while the existence of a royal love child was an open secret in royal circles, it was never revealed publicly until 1999. The bombshell, when it came, was from the most unexpected of places. A skinny Flemish teenager named Mario. I think they saw me as some innocent schoolboy. A lot of people, you know, when I walked in for an interview, um, a lot of people went, oh, is this for school? And I said, no, no, I am writing a book, but people didn't quite believe that I was going to deliver. He spent his adult life in Ireland. But Mario De Niels grew up in Belgium. His ambition as a boy was to be an author. Incredibly, at the age of 16, he charmed his way into the palace to write a biography on Queen Paola. I found that she was a very glamorous, beautiful, stunning uh, woman uh, in the 60s and 70s. And then she became this kind of slightly dull queen in 93 when King Albert became king. And I just kind of wondered what had happened to her, you know? After dozens of interviews, the disarming teenager scored a meeting with a palace official who spilled the beans about the royal affair and the existence of Delphine Boel. And he just looked at me and said, but everyone knows Albert has another daughter. And I just looked over at my publisher and he looked at me and I, I, our eyes were going like, no, nobody knows this. So you choked on your lunch? <laughs> Pretty much. In 1999, the schoolboy writer did deliver and his book included a single line about the existence of a royal love child. Ultimately, I chose to you know, just kind of cryptically mention it in a half sentence without naming Delphine's name. I just spoke of, you know, the half-sister of Paola's children and the fact that the Queen wasn't just willingly accepting the fact that she existed. And that's all I said. Having sat on the story of the royal love child for decades, that cryptic half-sentence was all the excuse the media needed. When it came out, when it hit the book stands, what happened, Mario? It was an incredible media circus, but because it was something that never really happened in Belgium before, you know, um, exposing the private life of a king so openly, the media didn't 
quite know what to do, but at the same time, the day after my book was published, they were all camping outside Delphine's front door in London. So there was a standard of hypocrisy as well. This 18-year-old boy uh, was a mere excuse to expose what the media already knew. I have a private life and I have no comment. But he's our king and we have... Uh... I have no comment. I don't know if you've seen the film Notting Hill. You know, I just had this wall of paparazzi outside my, my house in London. And so suddenly it became this big news. This thing of Delphine and the love child of King Albert became a big event worldwide, actually. For the deeply conservative king and queen, the scandal and the embarrassment were too much. Albert and Paola made a pact. She was willing to give him another chance, basically, on the condition that Delphine would never be spoken of again, basically, and that she certainly would never get any recognition of any sorts. He didn't want, and this is what he kept telling friends, and um, he didn't want to hurt her with that old story again. So to them, Delphine became an old story. And then he just exploded on the telephone saying, never call me again, you're not my daughter. And that was when I was 33 years old. Was that the last thing he said to you? Yes. Why, why did he do that? I don't know. At the palace, the shutters were down. Delphine found herself ostracized and ignored. He was unapproachable. I tried lots of different ways. I, I, I wrote letters, my phone calls, forget it. I tried to do it through the Cardinal. I tried to see politicians and friends. But when somebody's in power like King, you don't want to upset them. You don't want to get on the wrong side of them. So not even friends would approach him to say, I think you have to do something about this. You can't do this to your daughter. You know, communicate to her at least, try to say what's going on. They just wanted her to remain hidden, to go away. But how can you tell someone to go away? Someone with feelings, someone with, with a history, with, with, with her own past, her own personality. Everything they could possibly do wrong, they, they did wrong, the royal family, in this entire saga. Coming up. If they have a title, I have a title. A scorned love child. When the DNA came out, I felt so so betrayed. Refuses to be forgotten. The guts. She just stood up for herself. How Delphine fought the king. Could have been so simple. It could have been so normal. And one Princess Delphine has a very royal ring to it. <laughs> That's next on 60 Minutes. In 2013, at the end of a 20-year reign, King Albert II abdicated the throne to his son, Philippe, and was forced to deal with the skeleton in his closet by the daughter he disowned 11 years earlier. I thought, OK, now I want to be treated equally to his other children. So if they have a title, I have a title. Over the years, as a successful artist, Delphine Bowell had a growing public profile and was increasingly vocal about her treatment by her father. No longer the king, so no longer immune from prosecution, she decided to take him to court, where this royal showdown got very ugly indeed. These courts lasted for a very, very long time. During those, those years, it was extremely unpleasant. Albert's side and his lawyers were horrible. I think that's what's so sad about this story, is that it could have been so simple, it could have been so so normal. And it just became a saga, and, and, and it should have never been like that. All this should have been done behind walls, behind, you know, in, 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 in private. Through it all, Albert gave Delphine the coldest of shoulders. And when a judge took the extraordinary step of ordering a DNA paternity test, he point blank refused. Which is really very nasty when you think of it, because you can't allow, I think, a human being to not 
be sure where they come from. And just give your DNA, okay? No big deal. Public opinion went from thinking that Delphine was taking it too far to Albert being a sad man who just would not take his responsibility as a father and as a human being. With his reputation in tatters, in the end, it appears to have been money rather than morals that swayed the former king. Forced by the court to pay $8,000 for every day he failed to submit to a DNA test, he relented. And in January this year, faced with irrefutable scientific proof, Albert grudgingly conceded that Delphine was his biological daughter. And then when the DNA came out, his lawyer said, well, you know, actually, he never really felt he was uh, the, the father of Delphine. He had no emotions for her and so on. I felt so betrayed because you have to remember that during all those years, I completely protected him, you know? I loved him. As an observer, I really can't understand why the pushback from the royals at this stage. I would have thought in 2020, an illegitimate child in a scandal for a royal family is really not such a big deal. I know, you'd think so. And it really is not a big deal. I don't know, I, I don't know why, why all this pushback. It could be a little to do with religion. You know, they're very, very religious. They're very Catholic. Well, he can't be too Catholic. He had an 18 year affair with your mother. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. I don't know, maybe they're frightened, you know? Just last week, what started with a book reached a final chapter. After a seven year struggle, a court ruled Delphine and her children had won the right to royal titles. Once derided as a bastard, Delphine Boel has been officially anointed as a princess of Belgium. Princess Delphine has a very royal ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Well, I will ask people to still call me Delphine because that's me and that's my artist name and I will always stay an artist. Well, I wouldn't be so easy on your husband. I'd make him kneel whenever he came in the room. <laughs> Don't play it down too much. OK, I'll remember that. <laughs> For this new princess, it's an emotional victory. Il est resté très en arrière. For the former king, a humiliating defeat. A battle fought not for money or for fame, but on the principle that a father should always look out for his kids. I, I'm proud of myself because uh, it was difficult and I had to fight for something that really belongs to me and belongs to my children. And, and I hope that by what I've done, it can help other people not to give up. And that's very special for me. I feel very proud because I know how important it is. It really is important to know you know, where you come from. It was Mario Daniels who revealed Princess Delphine's secret lineage to the world, setting off a chain of events that would lead to royal scandal and humiliation. But perhaps his crowning achievement is that ultimately he gave Delphine Boel the power, not only to confront her past, but to own her present, to be the princess she always was. What do you think of Delphine? What do I think of Delphine? I mean, the guts she has. <laughs> she just stood up for herself and said, this is not right, this is not okay, you know? And she took on a king, um, the establishment of an entire country, basically, um, and she fought for her rights. She did everything she could for so many years to get back in touch. He refused, it's all on him. You know, and everything that ensued since, the headlines all over the world, that's on him. He made that decision. It was his choice. One thing that makes me extremely happy is that the courts have listened to me. They have agreed that this shouldn't be accepted. And that, for me, has given me an enormous amount of hope. OK, I, I, I won't have the love of my father and 
maybe brothers and sisters, but I feel really respected now. That's good, isn't it? I mean, I'm alive again. And that's very beautiful, very beautiful. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.